right, this is our online lab about the urinary system. So most of the pictures and structures we're going to look at today is in chapter 25 of your textbook, giving you a page reference looking at the first section, um, objective number one, you can find in your textbook on page 955. Objective 2, looking at the different regions of the kidney, that is shown on page 958. And objective number 3, looking at the different parts of the nephron, that is shown on page 961. And then there's some tissues in objective number, oh wait, not, not quite yet, um, let's talk about objective number 4, looking at the parts of the glomerulus, that's page 962. And then the different tissue slides on page 32 of your lab packet, looking at the bladder and the kidneys. Um, the bladder is shown in your textbook. Um, if I can find it here, hopefully I can find it. It might be actually in the ch in chapter four. The best picture of it, yeah. The best picture would be in chapter four. It's transitional epithelium. So looking in chapter four, that is shown toward the end of the epithelial chapter. That would be on page 123. You'll find the transitional epithelium, page 123 of your book. And then the kidneys, um, looking at the glomer or the renal corpuscle and renal tubules, that's on page 960. And I also have some better pictures on Blackboard to help um, demonstrate those tissues as well. So we'll just begin with objective number one, looking at page 955, um, just the general overview of the ur urinary system. So we have a pair of kidneys. They lay on the back wall uh, uh, behind the peritoneal cavity. We call them retroperitoneal, which means they um, are not within the peritoneal cavity but behind them. And they're about the size of your fist. Um, not very large organs, and their job is to filter the blood and create urine. So the structures related to the urinary system are a pair of kidneys here, and then the ureters drain the kidneys of the urine that they produce and sends that urine to the bladder. So this muscular organ here is the bladder. It stores urine, and then where it narrows at the end here is the urethra, and that allows that urine to exit the body under our control. So here, a pair of kidneys we can see. This is the model you'll see in class. And then these ureters that drain the urine from the kidney to the bladder. And this narrow opening at the end, again, is the urethra. So now we're going to zero in and look at the kidney in more detail. I'm going to show you a model of our kidney so you can see what you're going to be tested on. So this is our model we have in class. So looking at the different regions, this indented region of the kidney here is called the hilum. The hilum is the indented area of the kidney. And again, we have the ureter that drains the kidney of the urine produce that it produces. And then we have two vessels that feed the kidney or drain the kidney. The red vessel is the renal artery, so that's bringing blood that needs to be filtered into the kidney. And then the larger vessel, colored in blue here, that's the renal vein. So that brings blood away from the kidney back to the vascular system. So the renal artery and the renal vein. Also, if we look at that other picture that I showed you in the PowerPoint, we can see the renal artery there quite well leading to the abdominal aorta and the two renal veins leading to the inferior vena cava here. So just look for the blue vessel for the renal vein, red vessel for the renal artery. So, looking at the different regions of the kidneys, this outer lighter portion of the kidney, you can see it's lighter in color, this is called the renal cortex. So this outer portion, it's the whole region of the kidney, it's called the cortex. So it's not a specific structure, it's just a region or tissue on the outer edge of the kidney. And then this darker region toward the middle, this whole area here, we call the medulla. So this inner region, we call the medulla. And the medulla is divided up into these triangular portions. So if we zero in on just one portion within the medulla, this triangular piece here, and here, and here, we call each of these a renal pyramid. And think of a pyramid as being pointed at the top and wider at the bottom. So you can see they have a slightly triangular shape. That's where they get their name as a renal pyramid. And the tip of the pyramid, you'll see, is lighter in color. 
The tip of the pyramid is called a renal papilla. The tip of each renal pyramid is called a renal papilla. Or another name for it is the apex. Maybe that's a little easier to remember because the pointed part of a triangle we also call the apex. So that is the apex or renal papilla. And then every now and then along the between the pyramids you'll see some cortex that dips down between them. These are called renal columns. So this region of cortex between some pyramids here are called renal columns. That's where we can see blood supply gets a little deeper into the tissue here by these blood vessels running in the renal columns. So that's between the sections of medulla, or the renal columns. And then the calyx, the calyx is, you can see there's like a piping system here leading to the ureter. Each one of these pyramids is drained by its own vessel which collects urine produced within the medulla, which is called a calyx. So here one's been cut open, we're seeing a side view, sagittal view. This is a calyx, this is a calyx, here's another calyx, here's another calyx. So each of these is a calyx. Collectively we call them calyces, but they drain each medulla. And then these calyces lead into the pelvis. So this common collecting area for urine produced within each medulla is called the pelvis, so this common region here. And then from there the urine goes into the ureter. So we have the calyx, the pelvis, and the ureter draining that urine. So if we zero in closer and looking at the specific structures that actually produce the urine, that's the nephron, and that's this tiny little tubular structure that's shown here. And the nephron, there's thousands and thousands of nephrons in our kidneys that are constantly producing this urine. So we call the nephron the structural and functional unit of the kidney. So here's a nephron up close. And if we look back, um, let's see if I can find the other picture here. If we look back at here's a, a section of the kidney, here's the cortex, here's the medulla, we can see where the nephron starts. We have this structure out here in the cortex, which is a is a capsular structure. It's called Bowman's capsule. So here it's been it's intact. Here it's been sliced in half so we can see what's inside it. So we can see that the blood supply going into the cortex branches in this little tuft of capillaries here, surrounded by this structure called Bowman's capsule. So the tuft of capillaries inside of that has its own name, which is called the glomerulus surrounded by this capsular structure, Bowman's capsule. So the two of them together, the Bowman's capsule with the tiny tuft of capillaries inside, is called a renal corpuscle. So here's a zeroed in, um, zoomed in kind of view of that. Here's Bowman's capsule, and here's this tuft of capillaries called the glomerulus. So together, this entire structure here is called a renal corpuscle. So moving back to our kind of zoomed out view here, so here's the glomerulus, here's Bowman's capsule, and then we have a network of tubules. So these long thin structures here are called renal tubules, and there are specific sections of the tubule that you'll need to know the name of. This first section of the tubule that connects to Bowman's capsule is called the proximal convoluted tubule. It's a tubule that has a kind of zigzags back and forth. It doesn't have a real straight directional um, arrangement. It just kind of curves all different directions, and that's where the term convoluted comes from. And it's proximal because it's right next to Bowman's capsule, attaches to Bowman's capsule, is very close to the glomerulus. So this is the proximal convoluted tubule. And then as it straightens out here, it becomes the long and narrow loop of Henle. So this long, thin, U-shaped structure here is called the loop of Henle. And kind of ignore the colors here, because the colors can kind of throw you off, because it doesn't really show you where the loop of Henle starts and begins. So just look for this long, narrowed structure here. That's the loop of Henle. And then it starts to kind of zigzag all different directions again. This is called the distal convoluted tubule. Remember, distal means further from the point of attachment, so this is further down the nephron, called the distal convoluted tubule. Again, convoluted because it zigzags all over the place here, up as right before it connects to the collecting duct. 
So the collecting duct is this long, straight, kind of tree branch looking structure. It's not part of the nephron because several other nephrons connect to it. That's where we see these little connecting points here. So here's where one nephron connects and here's where another connects. And there's, and so there's other connecting points here as well. So again, this is called the collecting duct. So we have the glomerulus in the center, Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, the long, thin, narrow U, and then distal convoluted tubule here, and then the collecting duct. So you'll notice there's some asterisks here, which means you not only need to know what this looks like in a model, but also on a slide. So I believe I found some here on a slide. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So here's a slide of this tissue. Here is a glomerulus. Can you see how much darker red it is and how the, the cells are clustered together? That's the looking at the cells of the capillaries that form the glomerulus. So this is the glomerulus here. Here's another glomerulus. Just look for these dark clusters of cells. Here's another glomerulus. And then these open areas here, those are the renal tubules. So any one of these open areas is a renal tubule. So just look for the clear lines, open space, long structures, those are the renal tubules. So this is shown um, on objective number five on page 32 where it says renal corpuscle, renal tubule. Remember renal corpuscle is Bowman's capsule with um, the glomerulus inside. So that's what this is. Bowman's capsule is hard to see but it would be on the outside here and, and inside is the um, glomerulus. And again, this is the renal tubule, these long, thin structures. All right, so going back, um, we're going to zero in here on the glomerulus and look at some other structures. So here's the glomerulus, this tuft of capillaries. Here's Bowman's capsule that's going to lead to the proximal convoluted tubule here. So we have two vessels coming in and out of Bowman's capsule leading to the glomerulus. This thick muscular vessel is called the afferent arterial. And you can tell it's the afferent arterial for one, it's red in color, and it's much thicker in diameter, just like we talked about in lecture, how the arterioles are more muscular, smaller lumen than the venules. But in this case, we have two arterioles, one leading to the glomerulus, one draining the glomerulus. So this is an exception to the rest of our capillary networks in the body, that we actually have two arterioles leading into this, because normally this would be a venule in other capillary systems in the body. So this is the afferent arterial leading into the glomerulus, and this is the efferent arterial carrying blood away from the glomerulus. So just be aware that there's two arterioles, but the afferent one is much more muscular um, and thicker walled because of being more muscular, and that's the afferent arterial. And then if we look at another picture here, we can see, find my picture right here, so we have all these blood vessels that are found around the proximal and distal convoluted tubule up here. This is called, these are called paratubular capillaries. So these are all around the nephron. Paratubular capillaries, these thin red vessels. And then continuing on looking at the urinary bladder. I have a picture here. Somewhere. I think it's back in our PowerPoint, actually. I'll go back to this. So here's a nice diagram from your textbook of the kidney showing the renal vein, renal artery, ure ureter, pelvis, each of the calyces, calyx, draining into the pelvis, cortex on the outside, medulla here in the middle, the apex of each pyramid, and the columns going between the pyramids. So here's another uh, picture of the paratubular capillaries that are all wrapped around those distal and proximal convoluted tubules. You can see that that comes from the, a, from the efferent arterial. The efferent arterial leads to the paratubular capillaries here. And here's the afferent arterial coming in. And then we're looking for the urinary bladder. Here's a nice slide of the renal corpuscle. That's what's shown. Um, here, so A is actually pointing to the glomerulus, B is pointing to Bowman's capsule. 
So you can see that clear space around it is Bowman's capsule and the cluster of cells in the center are, are the cell walls of the glomerulus. So this is a renal corpuscle, the whole structure. And here we can see a renal tubule over here. So that's a nice picture of that. Here's some more renal tubules here, these long narrow structures, renal tubules. And then I have the bladder right here. Okay, so the bladder has this special epithelium on the inner surface. So here's where the urine would be, this open space here. And then we have these special cells called transitional epithelium. And when we say transitional, it means it's transitioning from one appearance to another. So when the bladder is full of urine and the walls are stretched, those cells can look squamous. But then as the bladder empties and the wall is less stretched, they appear more cuboidal in nature. So they can look plump and full when the bladder is not full of urine, and then it can be stretched very thin when the bladder is full of urine. So we say it's transitioning from one appearance to another. So this is transitional epithelium. It looks just kind of like plump cells all piled on top of one another. That's very characteristic of this transitional epithelium. So that's, where the, that's what's in contact with our urine, and this is what becomes inflamed when someone has a urinary tract infection and causes irritation that can actually go into the deeper layers. This is the connective tissue layer, and then here is the muscular layer. You can see these flattened cells made of smooth muscle. This is the layer that then becomes irritated as well and causes abnormal contractions of the bladder, and that's one of the symptoms of a urinary tract infection is feeling the urge to go to the bathroom a lot, or we call that urgency and frequency of urination. Even though the bladder is not full, it's irritated due to inflammation from bacterial infection. So this is the smooth muscle layer of the bladder. Let's look for those thin layers many layers of cells. Remember these are non-striated cells that are pointed on the ends. So this is the smooth muscle layer and the inner layer here close to the urine or the lumen is transitional epithelium. So you have to know the layers number one and number three, not the connective tissue layer. Like here is the connective tissue layer. You don't have to know that layer, just the transitional and the smooth muscle. So that concludes the urinary system. We will pick up and lab together with the reproductive system.